new employees are an inevitable part of any business. As new members join the team, each and every one of them will eventually be required to complete some type of training program. While there is no perfect method of training, we need to work together to find the system that is most beneficial to all parties involved. Today, we will be meeting two individuals who hold differing viewpoints on what the ideal training process would look like. Let's meet Mr. Suit Guy and Mr. Caveman. Mr. Suit Guy is currently in charge of the training process. Mr. Caveman, having been around for a very very long time, believes he may have some ideas that could help Mr. Suit Guy be more successful. Today we'll look at the two different ways these men approach the training process. But first, let's have a look at how things have changed over the course of the last 20 years. Mr. Caveman can remember a time when he was part of the greatest furniture moving company in the country. 20 years ago, his company utilized an on-the-job training process that consisted of one teacher and one student. This one-on-one -on -one method of training was not without its flaws, but it did prove to be very successful. Mr. Caveman's company held the number one spot for several years, and then something changed. The company abandoned the one-on-one -on -one training system and replaced it with one that utilized a three-person team consisting of two experienced trainers, and one new trainee. While in theory, this method would seem to be the superior option. In practice, it proved to be the opposite. This new, third wheel, method became a breeding ground for bad habits. The two trainers would neglect to engage the trainee, and fail to teach him proper techniques. As a result, every moving crew now consisted of two movers and a third man standing around without any idea of what he should be doing. Not only did this give the company an unprofessional look, but it also created unprofessional employees. Within one year of implementing this new training process, Mr. Caveman's company went from number one in the country, to dead last. While there is no direct evidence proving the new method of training to be the singular cause of the company's decline, it would seem to be more than mere coincidence. Now let's take a look at the way operations are currently being managed, and see if we can make any improvements. As training system coordinator, Mr. Suit Guy is focused on creating a process that is equally beneficial to everyone involved. And while he may have the best of intentions, his ideas are based on theories rather than experience. Not only does he continue to apply the third wheel method, he has also created a single day simulated moving environment class for new employees. And while these ideas may be sound in theory, in practice they have proven to be less than optimal. Operating the training class requires the removal of two experienced drivers from service for an entire workday in order to perform their training duties. With two senior employees and five trainees receiving payment for an entire day's work while generating zero revenue, one would hope that the class would be a success. Unfortunately, several trainees have expressed that they had learned very little from attending the class, and felt that they had learned much more by spending a single day on the truck with Mr. Caveman. Mr. Caveman believes there is a way to complete the training that will be more beneficial to everyone involved in the process. And while his tiny caveman brain is only able to produce simple solutions to these complex problems, his ideas are based upon what he has learned during his several years of experience in the field. As a firm believer in the training process being the most important stage of an employee's development, he also is aware of how much more abuse a trainer's body is subjected to while using the one-on-one -on -one system. With this being said, Mr. Caveman believes a real trainer should be ready to face a higher level of adversity, and should also be paid accordingly. He proposes a $5 per hour additional bonus for, one-on-one -on -one trainers. This bonus would be subject to the same attendance restrictions as all other bonuses, and would give the title of, one-on-one -on -one trainer, the honor it deserves. If driving the truck is worth $4 per hour more than riding in the truck as a passenger, Mr. Caveman believes, one-on-one -on -one training, is worth at least an additional $5 per hour. Both Mr. Suit Guy and Mr. Caveman raise valid points when discussing the most efficient method of training. Perhaps we should weigh the pros and cons of each system by performing a side-by-side -side comparison. On the surface, Mr. Caveman's proposal may seem one-sided, in favor of the trainers. But if we take a closer look, we will see that his intention is to benefit the entire company. If Mr. Suit Guy was to consider adopting Mr. Caveman's system, the result would be a 67% decrease in training costs. 
If five trainees were to work two 40-hour weeks under Mr. Caveman's system, the additional trainer bonuses would amount to a maximum of $2,000. This would be the only real expense to the company, considering that under this system the entirety of the trainees' wages would be included in the price of the move. Under the current, third wheel system, the trainees' wages are not included in the price of the move. Over the course of two weeks, the wages of the same five trainees will cost the company $5,200. When we add the cost of the eight-hour training class, the combined wages of two drivers and five trainees would amount to an additional $792. If we were to consider all of the hidden expenses incurred using Mr. Suit Guy's method, the training of five new employees would carry a price tag of right around $6,200. While preventing unnecessary spending is beneficial to the company, some might say having a well-trained workforce is of greater importance. The one-on-one training method has proven to be very effective. And even though it is a more strenuous lifestyle for the trainer, the additional $5 per hour bonus would make it a worthwhile endeavor. Not only does the one-on-one system provide the trainee with a higher quality learning experience, but it builds a stronger bond between the teacher and student. The third wheel method can give trainees a false perception as to how challenging the job can really be. This often leads to employees staying on the roster only until they ultimately find themselves in a one-on-one situation. When a new employee has inadvertently been led to believe that his job is an easy one, the day he is introduced to the actual degree of difficulty is usually the day he loses interest and decides to quit. This day will most likely come at a time when that employee is most needed. Mr. Caveman has watched dozens of new employees complete their two weeks of third wheel method training, only to see them disappear soon after. And while it is always unfortunate to lose a new employee during his third week on the roster, when you are consistently losing them along with the expenses of an entire training class and two weeks of wages, you may have yourself an actual problem. Mr. Caveman is having a difficult time understanding why his company would allow itself to continue hemorrhaging money in this fashion and then put a cap on the salaries of its most loyal employees. He is also having a difficult time understanding how Mr. Suit Guy continues to be eluded by the obvious flaws in this system. Unfortunately, the facts we've learned today will be of little consequence. Mr. Suit Guy will most likely never change his method of employee training. He will almost certainly continue to use the system that is less effective, less efficient, and ultimately less beneficial to the entire company. And while Mr. Caveman is very aware that Mr. Suit Guy is free to run his company any way he sees fit, the fact that he would choose a system of such inefficiency has left Mr. Caveman feeling confused. Maybe he's just feeling confused because he's a stupid caveman. Mr. Suit Guy is most likely correct in his assumptions. But there is a small chance that Mr. Caveman is not the dummy dum dum that we all perceive him to be. After all, Each and every one of us just wasted 8 minutes and 37 seconds of our lives watching a video that he produced.